Okay, let's make some microworms. That's what you see here on the side of the glass, those little squiggly shapes there. These ones are pretty sleepy because they've been living in my fridge for a while, but they're still alive and they'll wake up. So these make a pretty great food for young fish fry because they're very small, very easy to culture and keep around the house, and they're full of fat, so they give them some much needed calories. Not great for protein, but they can go a long way for helping to get very small fry through that first week or so. So today I'm gonna to show you how to set up a culture of these. I got that set up down here in a moment. And we're gonna need just a few very simple things. You need some kind of a container right here. I've got a 16 ounce deli cup. These work really well. The plastic is pretty thin, easy to poke holes in. You are gonna to need to let some air in or else the things will suffocate. We're also gonna need some kind of a medium that will host and feed them. Um, if you look this up online, you might see a lot of different materials you can use to do it. You might commonly see oatmeal and flaked potatoes, but I highly, highly recommend the flaked potatoes because even as these cultures sit at room temperature for one, two, three weeks, the potatoes don't really uh, smell on you and the oatmeal certainly does. So don't even try it, just do the potato. It works so much better. And my goal today is to give you a simple recipe you can follow where you don't have to do a bunch of trial and error figuring out how much potato or how much water to mix together here to make a medium for them. Now, if you don't use this container and you use something much smaller or much larger, these numbers might not work, but I think the ratio will. And what we're looking at is being about double the amount of water to the amount of flaked potato by volume, if not a little bit more. So in this instance, I've, I've been doing a little testing today, and I think for this 16 ounce container, about three tablespoons of the flaked potato would work pretty well. Now you saw that culture cup, it's not very much material on the bottom because the microworms, they just sit on top of the media, they don't really go into it. So there's nothing to gain really beyond just having an adequate layer on the bottom of your container. So there's our flaked potato. Let's add some water here. You might be wondering, does this have to be dechlorinated? And I would say it probably wouldn't hurt if it was dechlorinated, but the first time I set up a culture, it was not and it didn't seem to bug them. Four, five, and six. So that would be double. We'll do a little bit more than that, maybe almost seven. And the more times you do this, you'll kind of get to where you can eyeball how wet this needs to be. Right now it looks pretty sloppy, but as the flake potato absorbs that water, it's going to get a much more solid consistency. It's easy to work this out if you don't do enough water or you do a little too much. You know, if it's too dry, you can just add a little bit more water, mix it up, see how it's turning out. If you add too much, say by the time this is thoroughly mixed, if you still had water in the corner there, that might be too much. And if you do, you can just take a piece of paper towel here and just kind of dip that into the corner and soak up the excess water. Or you can just add more potato, but you might end up with more in your cup than you want to have. See, as we keep on mixing, this is going to get a little bit thicker. So microworms, they want to live in an environment that's damp, but they're not aquatic. They will drown in water. So you don't want too much, but you also want to keep it moist or they'll dry out. So we're looking for kind of a specific texture here. If you touch it, it should feel wet. I would say it should feel wet, but you don't want water pooling up around the edges here. So I'm pretty happy with that. This specifically was three tablespoons of the flaked potato and just about seven tablespoons of water. We wanna keep the sides of it as clean as you can because what we're looking for when we go to harvest this culture later is the microworms crawling up the side of the container. And so it helps to have it kind of clean, but honestly, I wouldn't worry too much about it because the worms are gonna drag a bunch of potato up there with them. So when you go to collect them off the walls, it, you're gonna pull away more than just microworm. Just, just be prepared for that. It's probably not gonna hurt anything, but 
just be prepared. Okay, so this is pretty much ready. We got a container, we got the holes poked in the lid. This is most of the work right here. All you need is some microworms that are already alive. So if you don't have any of these, maybe you can get a hold of them from a local shop if you're lucky enough that they carry them, maybe a local hobbyist, or last resort, you can order them online. These I got from an online store called The Silkworm Shop, and I was pretty happy with that. Got a nice little culture sent to me in a container about this big. They also sent me a, a starter culture kit, which really was just a deli cup and some flaked potatoes. I don't think you need that. If you're going to keep these going long term, you might as well just get yourself a box of potatoes and find some deli cups or a Tupperware that you don't care about. Okay, so we're ready. All we got to do is take some live microworms out of here and get them into there. Now this one I've already pulled some from today, so you can't see as many of them accumulated along the wall here, but from my view, you might not be able to see it. The surface of this is just shimmering with microworms. But look at that color. You can see this, this culture is kind of going bad. This is kind of the point where it gets way more watery than when you started and it starts to change color. This is about dead. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this. So all we gotta do is take some of this material and get it on top of the new culture. That's it, nothing to it. You can get them off the side. If there's still some there, you can just scoop some off the top. I'm gonna take a close look at this. Yeah, you can see that shimmer a little bit. Okay, plenty of live here. Just gonna get them on top. That is it. You don't have to stir them in. Actually, you really shouldn't stir them in. If you do, you're probably just gonna bury them in potato and they'll suffocate. I'm just gonna leave this alone. And I'd say probably somewhere between three to five days, that population, that small group I put in there is going to rapidly reproduce and just be covering the whole surface of this potato medium here and be starting to crawl up the sides. And the culture lasts probably two or three weeks. Just watch for the color change and for it to get real watery. Also, you'll see the population kind of diminish. They really reproduce out of control if the culture is healthy and clean. So I think you'll know when it's time to start a new one. The key here is redundancy. You don't want to have to be reordering starter cultures online once every three or four weeks or whenever you need a new batch of them. So redundancy is key. These are cheap. You might just want to make a few of these, keep them around. So if something bad happens to one culture, you have backups. Another nice thing about microworms is that they're pretty tolerant of cold and they can survive as long as the temperature is above freezing. So if you just make a few of these and put them in the fridge, as long as you got some air holes poked for them, they'll live for, I've read that they can live for as long as six months. I have not tested that. I kind of cycle through them faster than that, but uh, definitely for a month or more. And then you can pull them out when you need them and let them wake up and just keep on going. So this one right here, I am going to put into the fridge so that I have it for later. But before I do that, I'm just going to leave this out at room temperature, which for me is about 70, 71 degrees. And I'm going to let those reproduce, let those numbers come up before I put it into the fridge. Say being cold happens to kill some of them or it just doesn't quite take off. I would rather have a large number of these things in there before I submit it to some stress. Um, that way I've got better odds of pulling it back out in a month and I've still got a healthy culture that I can just bring back to room temperature and, and, and have ready to feed in a day or two. So there you go. I'm gonna pause for a second here and put this away. Okay, and we're back. Last thing I wanna talk about before we wrap this up is how I at least feed these. Um, I really like to keep things clean and I don't wanna have this half rotting potato getting in with the fish fry, especially since they're so susceptible to infections. So what I like to do is remove the microworms from the edge and then give them a good rinse and then get them into a, a liquid where I can then distribute them. So I've really been liking Q-tips lately. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sweep some off the side here, maybe grab a little bit of that culture material, but that's fine because we're gonna rinse it. Okay, so this is just covered in them. And I've got here a little reusable K-cup kit that uses mini coffee filters. I really like this. It was just a few bucks, came with a bunch of filters. And as long as you rinse these, you can reuse them. You see this nice, clean and white? Well, I've used this, I can't count how many times. So it's not something where you have to then reinvest in buying more tiny coffee filters that happen to fit this. 
Okay, so microworms are all over the Q-tip. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to rinse them off of here into the filter. I normally just do this over the sink with tap water. That very brief exposure to chlorine or chloramine is not gonna kill them. They're fine. Okay, I probably got them all off of there. So there they are inside. You can see there's a tiny bit of junk in there, a little bit of potato. That's what I don't really want getting in with the fish fry. That's just gonna keep rotting. But little wriggling worms, you can see that shimmer all over the filter. So now we're good. Set that aside. So I keep a small container around to actually collect the microworms off the filter. I just take this thing Pull that filter paper out. Just kind of turn it upside down and dunk it. Rinse it off in the cup. Now let's see if you can see. Yeah, you can see them in there floating around. Tons of them. Okay, so this can be poured in. It can be pipetted in. And if you suck the microworms up with a pipette, you can kind of avoid those last remaining chunks of potato junk. There you go. There's an easy way to feed them. Or if you're not worried, you can just grab the microworms, leftover potato and all, and just tap the top of the water. They'll fall right in. But there you go. Nothing to it. Very easy. Don't let this be intimidating at all. If you can just get yourself some live microworms, it is easiest thing in the world to keep them going. So good luck. Hope it works for you. Bye.